Hey everybody, it's Ty Warner with uh, Kissop Gleason Corporation. Um, some questions about bearings have come up the last few days. I want to reiterate the My Kissop login customer area. Uh, if we go to the customer area, you can grab the My Documents right here. And you have these instructions, tutorials and such. Um, there's a bearing tutorial here, root optimization for you. I mean, there's all kinds of different ones here. There's more than this. Um, you just need to ask. <clears throat> okay. Uh, we have training information, courses with fixed dates. Uh, if you're new to Kissoft, I do recommend that you try and find a course, a training course, and get signed up for that. Uh, in this case, we're talking about bearings, specifically how to add a user bearing. Um, right here, 1.4 in this tutorial, which is adding bearings, right? You can go come down in here and you can see the types of bearings you can add, right? Settings, so forth. So you can add your own bearing um, and there's you can add it uh, either in the software, just as a in in a calculation, or you can add it to the software as a database. In order to add it to the software, you need to run Kissoft as the administrator. Okay, so right click, run as administrator. Okay, you need to have administrator privileges. Uh, for some of you, uh, you might not have that, depending on your on the company, you might have to have IT give you that permission. Okay, so now I'm in um, Kissoft, and you can see on my modules, I can open any one of these. I can go to shaft calculation, I can do, you know, bearings, roller bearings, different hydro, hydrodynamic bearings. Uh, I don't need to get in any of these in order to add a bearing. I simply go to my database tool, and I can do that right here on the ribbon. It says database tool, or uh, I think I can go into extras database tool. So here, okay, I like to just grab the ribbon. So I just grab the ribbon. It's going to come up with a window. It says, do you want to open the database with right authorization? The answer is yes, because I'm going to add my own variant. Okay. So here's my database window. Okay. And here's all these different types of bearings that I can enter all right, that I have in my database. Okay. Uh, let's say I have a, just a, a deep groove ball bearing, a single row. If I double click this, it opens up the database to the double, what is the single row, uh, deep groove ball bearings. All right. Here's all the bearing labels, the manufacturer, the ID. Um, in this case, I have it as inches. Uh, if I want, I can change that just by a right click to millimeters, right? I can do the same thing over here. I have a pound force for load. I can set it to newtons or kilonewtons, whatever, okay? Here's the thing. If I know, as an example, well, I'm just going to scroll down here and let's say I'm in a, oh, let's say I'm working on some, some kind of a big equipment, right? And or quasi big equipment, and I'm going to run a 6215 RS1. So this would be a sealed bearing, right? This RS is a sealed bearing type. Maybe I go two RS1. It's got two seals. This one only have one seal. Um, I can double click this, and it opens up this bearing information, and I have basic data, the diameter information. I've got uh, these factors. I have some additional data, right? Fatigue load limits. And I have some internal geometry for the bearing. But let's say that I have this bearing and I went to a bearing manufacturer and I said, hey, I need some special materials. Uh, maybe I need some... I don't know, some, you know, 9310 cryo-treated rings, and I need to have some special bearing ball material, some, something, coating, who knows what. 
a titanium coat or something. What I can do is I can highlight this bearing and then down here you see this plus the blue plus button and the remove row. If I add a row it's going to take that information from that bearing and it's going to create a new entry. So we're going to call this take a pretty good bearing. Okay. And it's going to be this it's all this other information is whatever it is and we're going to call it the best, right? And the note's going to be you know Maybe I'm using Ferrium C64 or something, right? And maybe this inner diameter and the nominal width, all that stays the same, but now my basic load ratings I can change. So if I know that my basic load ratings are twice, so now I'm at 52,000. And my static load rating is, uh, you know, instead of 17,000 pounds, maybe it's 36,000 pounds. I don't know, you know, somewhere in there. Let's say the speed limit doesn't change for either of these, and the weight really isn't going to change. These factors aren't going to change. Um, if you're a bearing designer, uh, you can define what these factors are. Um, if I click on there and hit F1, you know, I, I can get this kind of information. So now I go to additional data. I have these other rating permitted values I can enter. All right, stiffness, thermal speed, maximum alignment, it's alignment, fatigue load limit. You know, maybe this is now, I don't know, 1600. This would be for like a million cycles of long life. And then I have these other values I can add, right? What is this one? Oh, that number is CA. I have to look at axial stiffness, tilting stiffness. I can enter these values and, um, even the price and the availability. Uh, internal geometry, I can enter these. Okay. Um, this is the internal geometry kind of stuff. All right. And I can even put more data in here if I say I have an inner ring uh, or without an inner ring, right? I can define that stuff. So there's, there's good information here that I can put in here. I'd say, okay. Uh, now, if I scroll down to the bottom, it's like, it's like a pretty good bearing right there. It's, it's in here. And I can select that from any list. I'm not going to save this. Okay. Now when I go in here and I open up a shaft mod module, I can, you know, if I had saved that, I'd be, able, I'd be able to pull that open. I do have bearings that I put in here on occasion um, from suppliers where they have their own specially designed bearings. So it's really easy to enter your own bearing. You do have to have some knowledge about it. Um, talk to some bearing manufacturers about certain things. There's a good chance you're not going to get all the information for the bearing, but if you can get the basic uh, loads, axial loads, and uh, the radial and dynamic loads, you know that's a big deal. So if you have that stuff, great. Uh, you can enter your own bearings. It's really easy with Kissoft. And again, um, this kind of goes through the whole thing right here again, too. You can add a bearing. So while well, this is talking about adding a bearing to a shaft. Well, you should go through this stuff anyways. So go to your Kissoft, go to your customer documents, and then you can, you know, look at these tutorials and the manual, too. So don't forget there's a manual, right? You go on the manual, you hit control F, and then you can find anything you want in the manual. It'll show you exactly how to do it in there as well. Uh, hopefully this has been educational. Again, I'm Ty Warner with Kissoft Tech Support here in North America. Um, good luck on your engineering, your design. If you have any questions, please call tech support right away or email us and then we can, we can get you set up. Thanks.